thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart.
thank you, Father God. We praise your holy name, Lord. You are good. Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me, Lord, that you alone will be glorified. Oh, 
Good morning. Good morning. God bless everyone this morning. Welcome. Welcome to Grace Christian Center. Welcome all those that are visiting with us this morning. And we welcome all those that are viewing by internet. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Are you joyful this morning? Not because the uh, Cowboys and Texans are playing tonight, but are you joyful because you're in the house of the Lord? Amen. Go Texans, by the way, but uh, amen. We have some announcements here this morning. Tonight at 5 p.m., 5 p.m., we're going to gather tonight and have our service. All the adults will be in the, in the fellowship hall and the girls' ministries and Royal Rangers will have their classes and all their age groups in their classrooms. So don't miss out at 5 p.m. I will be speaking in 1 Peter chapter 2 for the, for the adults. So Sunday night, tonight at 5 p.m. Also Tuesday night prayer is going to be at Believer's Sanctuary on House Street at 7 p.m. So prayer at, on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Believer's Sanctuary. Pastor Russ Fontaine is the pastor there at Believer's Sanctuary. Also Wednesday night, we have Wednesday night prayer, Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. And also, Friday night Bible study will be in the fellowship hall at 6 p.m. And we will continue in the book of Genesis. So that's all the announcements I have this morning. It's such an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. And once again, I say you have joy this morning. Amen. Amen. So as we, can, as we continue, if you have any cell phones, please silence them at this time. We don't want to disturb the word of God. And as we go, as we continue, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Because it's exciting times that we're living in. Amen. And we're going to be fixing to talk about Jesus. So that should bring everyone to have a smile on their face. Not because the Astros are ahead 2-0 in the, in, the, in the division league. But we serve a God. We serve a God who is, who is, is awesome. And we serve a God who is alive. So we need to be joyful this morning. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. We come before you in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, you are so good to us. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. And Lord, it's exciting times that we're living in, Father. And so I pray, Father, as we get into your word now. Lord, I pray that we will have our total attention on you, Father. Lord, let this word penetrate the mind and the heart this morning, Father, and let your will be done, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you this morning. Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to say good morning, and uh, glad you could uh, join us today. And uh, we're going to be in Revelation chapter 15. Revelation chapter 15. Father, I thank you and praise you, Father, with all my heart. Lord, I pray that your word will penetrate the mind, the body, and soul here, Lord. And I know it will, Lord, for you are faithful and true, Lord. And you always, Lord, speak to your people, Lord. You always bring a fresh word to them, Lord. And so, Lord, we come to you with a thankful heart, knowing, Lord, that, Lord, you will pour out your grace and mercy in our greatest time of need, Father. I thank you, Lord. Lord, I praise you for this, Father. So, Lord, your kingdom come, Lord Jesus, and your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 15. Revelation chapter 15. We're continuing our book study, Bible study, preaching, ser Sunday sermon series, whatever you want to call it. We're continuing it in Revelation chapter 15 and 16 today. I'm going to read this, and then uh, we're going to uh, look at the scripture and, and examine this. This is a very difficult message to preach because, you know, it does talk about a side of God that we don't want to see or hear. The side of wrath and judgment. You know, we know he is a God full of grace and mercy, but he is also a God of wrath and judgment. There will come a time when he will judge the earth and the inhabitants of the earth for their sin. And that is why Jesus came as, 
as God in the flesh to do away with the penalty of sin because the wages of sin is death. And Jesus nailed that sin, that wages of sin to the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so that's the understanding of the gospel. But it does not end there, guys. It talks about, the gospel goes on to talk about, as a Christian, and hear me out, please. As a Christian, you become baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus baptizes you in the Holy Spirit. And you begin to understand how to be a son or a daughter of the Most High King. It's called sanctification, where the Holy Spirit begins to teach you. He works in you, works through you. And you begin to, your ways of thinking begin to change. Your outlook on things, the way you talk, you no longer talk like you used to before the cross. But now even your very speech is different because your mind's been touched. And so, you know, that's what, that, that, that is some of the evidence that you've been not only redeemed, but you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because there's an inner change in you for God, a love for God, a, re, a love for God and a love for people. And so that is what God sees, and that's what God goes after. Now that your sins have been forgiven, it don't end there, those guys. God wants to teach you how to live in this world, in this very dark and sinful world. One day, God will judge this world. People are saying today, well, look at all the evil that's happening in the world. Doesn't God care? Yes, he does. Isn't God going to do something about it? He has, and he will, could do another thing about it. He's brought salvation, but he will also bring now wrath and judgment soon. And that's why it's so important to come to Jesus, because he loves you. He is not angry with you. He is patient with you, wanting no one, absolutely no one to perish. No one to perish. And so we come to him, and we go into his word this morning. And in Revelation chapter 15, it says this. Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them... The wrath of God is complete. The wrath of God is about to be poured out upon the world in this time, in this scripture, in this passage. God's wrath will be complete. Nobody wants to be around for that. The Bible says, What a dreadful thing it is to fall into the hands of a living God. Verse 2 says this, And I saw something, like a sea of glass mingled with fire. And those who have the victory over the beast, meaning the people who lived in the tribulation and did not receive the mark of the beast, the Antichrist. He saw them, and over, he, they, were, they had victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, and over the number of his name. Standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works. Lord God Almighty, just and true are your ways. O King of the saints, who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you. For your judgments have been manifested. This is a beautiful song. It's a song that only they know. It's a song that these saints that live through the tribulation, only they could understand this song. Only they understand the depths of the words of this song. Guys, what is your song today? What song are you singing to Jesus? A song of righteousness, a song of praise, or a song of woe to me, all is bad in the world? What is your song that you sing every morning to Jesus? This is their song, and they knew their song. It was the song of, of the sing, the song of Moses. Actually, this is recorded from Deuteronomy, this song. But it was also a new song, a song of the Lamb. Verse 5 goes on to say, well, these people, they had victory. Guys, look, let me tell you this. You cannot sing to Jesus if you don't have victory in your life. See, these people could had sing to Jesus because they had victory in their life. They had a final victory over the Antichrist. Guys, where's your victory song? Hey, man, where's your victory song? I see too many sour faces in church today. 
I see too many sour faces in people who call themselves Christians. Too many sour faces. Beat up by the world, chewed and spit out by the world. Where's your victory song? Where's your victory song? What has Jesus done for you? He's done a lot. Sing about it. Amen. Verse 5 says, After these things, I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And out of the temple came the seven angels, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure bright linen, and having their chests girded with golden bands. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls filled from the smoke from the glory of God and from his power and no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed now these are angels that look just like their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen and they come before John and before God before the temple of God and they have the authority of Christ to pour out the wrath of God you know, there's a scripture in the New Testament where the, it says, God says it is mine to avenge, right? Are we avenging anything today? You know, one of the biggest things that I talked about, that, that last week I talked about it, oh, this past Wednesday, and I'll talk about it here right now, is unforgiveness. When you have unforgiveness... That is one of the most destructive things in your life. It's worse than cancer. Jesus says, forgive as you have been forgiven. You know, if you truly walk with that in your mind, there's going to be less drama in your life. Amen. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you approach every situation, family members, people at your job, everything, with forgive as you've been forgiven. Forgive as Jesus has forgiven you. Love as Christ loves. When you approach everything like that, there's going to be less drama in your life. There's going to be less stress in your life. There's going to be more joy in your life. There's going to be more clarity in your life. You're going to be able to see with more clarity and hear the will of God for you and for the world. You'll be able to discern what's of God and what's not of God. Aren't those things worth shooting for these angels they had the authority to bring out this wrath upon God and as it comes out one thing that grabbed at me it says one of the four living creatures um, gave to the seven angels the seven golden bowls these are the high cherubim angels these are the four angels that's, that stand before God day and night saying holy 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 is the Lord God almighty and now the, these high cherubim angels which you also find in the book of Ezekiel that they're all you see how angels are involved in the process of bringing God's wrath upon the world do you see how the saints are involved do you see that how do they have they have harps what do you mean harps I've never played a harp in my life I don't even know how to play the guitar but it's just you know you're making a beautiful sound to the Lord this is beautiful guys and at the same time this is going to be the worst moment for the earth. Verse 8, you know, right now we have access to the temple of God. Do you know that, right? Where is the temple of God? The, the Bible does teach that it, it is the Christian, the body, right? But in this sense right here, verse 8, if we can pull up verse 8 again, it says, let's read this again. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. This is the very throne room of God. The wrath of God was about to be poured out upon the earth and God closed the doors to the temple. You know what that means? It means no intercession for the ungodly. You know, right now you can intercede for the ungodly. Am I right? Right now you can pray for them. You can witness to them, right? Amen? Because why? Because... The temple of the door of God is open right now. You can pray for the lost sinner. Christian, you have an opportunity now. But when this process begins, when this event happens, the door will be shut. God says, I'm not going to hear nobody no more. That's it. It's done. It's over with. I do believe that in the times of tribulation with the Antichrist and the false prophet, there will be people coming to salvation. There will be because the doors will be open. 
But no one will be able to come in at this time. God is saying, I will not, I will not hear any cases. Wow. He is in absolute control. That should register the urgency upon your heart today to look at your family, look at your children, look at your loved ones, look at society, and begin to understand that there is a time, uh, uh, the, the hourglass, there's a time that, that is winding down, and we must be about the work of our Father. That everything that we do, everything we say, everything we're about can truly lead people to Christ or away from Christ. You choose. Verse uh, chapter 16 says this. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. See, it wasn't a salt voice. It was a loud voice. It was a voice that was ready and sure to do what God had ordained so long to do. At this time, you could think about all the evil that has been done in the world, all the injustices that have been done in the world. You know, I told you earlier, the Bible says, God says it is mine to avenge. It is God's business to judge. Now, you see a lot of people telling Christians, who are you to judge me? You can't judge me. You see, look, there's a difference in types of judgments. For example, the judgment that is about to happen here is the judgment that only God can do. It's an eternal judgment. When you wake up in the morning and you decide what you want to eat, you've just made a judgment. You know, I cannot stand Lucky Charms. And I condemn it, right? <laughs> All right. And you know what I'm saying? You make judgments. Uh, uh, husbands, your wife will say, how do I look in this dress? You, if you're smart, you know what to say. Oh, man, you look amazing. So lovely. So beautiful. I don't care how much it costs, sweetie. You just buy it. Right. Right. Amen. A smart husband. Yeah. Happy wife. Happy life. Happy wife, happy life. Don't ever forget that, single guys. You make judgments about everything, amen? You make judgments about everything. That is different in the sense of the judgment of God. You know, you may not go around a friend anymore because you used to drink and party with them, and now you don't do that because you made a judgment. You know what? I can't go around them because they do not live the life that Christ has led me to. You've just made a judgment. That is totally different from the judgment of God. So we have to really, you know, define the words we use here. You are called to make judgments about things, guys. But when this judgment happens, it's the judgment that's led to eternal damnation. You know, when you make a judgment about a thing, it's not about, about you know, eternity. It's just about something that you're calling out. You have to make decisions. You have to make judgments. You have to make, you know, last night I saw, you know, the Astros play, you know, umpire making judgments, decisions, you know, out, strike, ball, you know. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So verse 2 says this. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth. And a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. It's so terrible because... There's seven bowls of wrath that fall out on the earth. And each is different. Seven symbolizes the number of what? Completion. And this is a complete thing that God is going to do. A loathsome sore. Has anyone ever had a sore? Of course you have. But this is a biblical loathsome sore. You don't want a biblical sore. Say amen. Say amen. amen. I don't want a biblical sore. No, right? You don't want that. It comes upon the people who had bowed down to the Antichrist. You see, when you bow down to the Antichrist, you get so loathsome sores. What do you get when you bow down to Jesus? You know why we can bow down to Jesus? Because he, he, he accepts worship because he's God. You ever think about that? 
If I bow down to Brother Robert or Brother Eric, uh-oh, some idolatry going on. False worship, but he's God. And we worship him and we fall down. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. When you bow down to the Antichrist, this is what will happen one day. Even when, you know, and you know what? Not just necessarily bowing down to the Antichrist, but even bowing down to your own selfish desires. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea in verse 3, and it became blood as a dead, as of a dead man, and every living creature in the sea died. Some people say this is all seven seas. Some people say that this was only in the Mediterranean Sea. There's different uh, opinions on this here. Either way, even if it's just all the Mediterranean Sea over there by Israel, that is an incredible. Can you, mem- can you imagine the stench? Of all the animals, the, the fish, the whales, the sharks, everything did. That's incredible. And then there's other, other people under the opinion that it will be all around the world, the stench. Foul fish smell. If that was to happen in the, all seven seas, the stench. Not a good place to be. Verse 4. Then the third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters saying, You are righteous, O Lord, the one who is and who was and who was and who is to be, because you have judged these things, for they have shed the blood of saints, the prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for it is their just due. Now, this is bringing the water, the rivers and the springs that, that are in a sense, are connected to the oceans, but these are beds of water on land. We get our water not from the sea, but from where? From the land, from the springs, right? And so people could say, oh, well, I didn't like fish anyways, <laughs> right? Whatever. Well, guess what? Guess what? Now your spring water is blood. There's no water to drink. No water to drink whatsoever. Why? Because God is saying, basically, since you thirsted and killing my people on the earth, the saints, I'm going to give you what you desire, blood. You see that? Verse 7. And I heard another from the altar saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. You hear that? When God does a, a thing, we have to not support him, but champion for him. What is God doing in the earth today? He's saving souls. The Bible says that when one angel, I mean, when one soul is saved, there are angels in heaven rejoicing. That's scripture. It should be our honor to be a part of the body of Christ today and to have a desire to see souls get saved today. We're going to talk about that at the end here. Verse 8 says this, Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And the men, and the men, were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give him glory. See, they did not repent because it was, God already knew they weren't going to repent. That's why God shut the door to the temple in the beginning of this lesson. You see what I'm saying? They would not repent. That's why God said, I ain't playing no game. God, no, God don't ever play games. And that's why God shut the temple. And nobody's coming in or out of my temple right now because I got some work to do on the earth. And look, as he's doing it, no one repented. Because God already knew the hearts. God already knows what you're going to do before you do it. But you see, that's God's business, not yours. This sun is intensified. We, we think it's hot now. We got all these people around, global warming, global warming. They have no idea what's about to come. <laughs> they have no idea. <laughs> no, 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 no global warming. The wrath of God. Verse 10. Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain they blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and they did not repent of their deeds guys this 
presents the fact that the heart of man is so incurably corrupt that even the fiercest judgments fail to affect its attitude, spirit, or conduct. God is pouring out these things and these people are defiant. They're blaspheming him. You know, what does that mean to blaspheme God? Does, can anybody understand what that word is, to blaspheme the Lord? You know, it, it's to speak irreverently about God or the sacred things of God. No respect for him whatsoever. We see that in movies when they say God's name in vain. When they say Jesus' name in vain. But yet Christians pay money to go see that. To be entertained. There's blasphemy, God, blasphemy of God's name all the time, sadly, today. Verse 12 says this. And again, verse 11, they did not repent of their deeds. They did not repent of their sores, their pains. You know, because of the pains and sores, they would not repent. You know, sometimes God will wound you to heal you. You know that? You get what I'm saying? Sometimes God will physically wound you so he can spiritually heal you. Where's my healing, God? Where's my healing? God says, I'm trying to heal your spirit first. God works from the inside out. Don't ever forget it. You know, someone who may be suffering from cancer, don't think God's mad at you. Someone who's suffering from diseases, sicknesses, don't think that it, because God's mad at you. That's, we live in a sin-fallen world. We live in a world that is filled with so many destructive things. Even the very foods we eat are not healthy for us. I think as a Christian, we need to start examining the foods we put in our body. Amen? Amen. 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 Y'all listening today, guys? Yes. Amen? <clears throat> then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them together for the battle of that great day of God Almighty. The sixth bowl represents these demons coming out of these religious false leaders and of the devil. The kings of the east... It symbolizes the kings truly from the east are coming. You know, if you look in the Greek translation of that scripture, it talks about the kings from the rising sun. This is talking about the kings of Japan, the kings of China, the kings of Asia. I want you to understand how the, some of the strongest economies in the world today are in Japan, are in China. The rising Military power today is in China today. If, if America was seized, would seize today from being a superpower, guess who would be next in line? Guess, China. No one can supersede them right now, with the exception of the United States, no one could supersede them in military or economic power right now. No one. You see scriptures being fulfilled. It's, the world is preparing for this already. Look at that, verse 12. Verse 12 says this, Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings, so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. The kings of the east are going to come and have battle with the Antichrist. You know, the kings of the east really have no religion whatsoever. They believe in themselves. And we can already see how the kings of the East are already forming. You know how we thought, you know, look, look at the North Koreans, the South Korea. South Korea, one of, the, one of the most, I mean, 5G internet was unleashed first in, North Korea, in South Korea. Right across the border, North Korea, there's absolutely nothing. They're prehistoric. That's all going to change soon. God's going to get in there and he's going to save a remnant of people before it's turned over back to the kings of the east. 
I'm telling you, this is an incredible time to be alive to see these things happening. Scripture's already telling us that the most, some of the most powerful nations on earth will be from the east. And they're coming. And these, de these demons are going to gather them all for battle. We're about to see a great war happen, guys. The, we're actually, the world is setting up for the battle of Armageddon. And not only that, but also the war of Ezekiel, as recorded in chapter 38 and 39. But Christian, have no fear. For God is with you. And God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind, of power, of love. Amen? Amen. Amen. When you see these things that begin to happen, the Bible says, Jesus says, stand up, lift up your head, for your redemption draws near. Amen? Behold, verse 15, Jesus says, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. I had a dream one time several years ago, don't laugh, okay, that I was walking around naked. And I was so embarrassed. I'm like, oh my goodness. I was, and, and I woke up and it was a thing from the Lord to help me to understand this scripture. Guys, he's not talking physically. He's saying spiritually, don't be found naked before God like this. Have on the clothes of righteousness. Wear the clothes, the, 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 the robes of righteousness may, may clothe you. Because when Christ sees you today, he ha God sees you today. He has to see his righteousness, Jesus Christ, on you. You know, th look, look, I want you to do something real quickly. Look at me. This physical shell that I'm in, it's not me. You hear what I'm saying? What makes me me my spirit listen young people listen because y'all are all into these you know social media and it's all about yourselves what makes you you what makes me me it's not this I could cut my, my arm could get cut off in an accident I could lose my legs but that doesn't make me what makes me me look past the physical shell and look into my character how I talk how I react, how, what I say, what I do. Look at those things. Look at my spirit. Look at my soul. That is the true you. That is the true you. Don't look at this physical shell. Don't look at my skin color. Because that doesn't matter. Now, if you look at me like that, how much more does God look at me or you? What is God really looking at? God's not looking at your physical. He's looking at you. He's, he, you know, a brother in Christ who went to heaven and came back. He died on the operating table and he came back to life. He said that when Jesus looked at him, he said that his, just looking at him just penetrated right through him, blew him away. And he didn't want to leave, but he sent him back and he, they revived him. Jesus looks at us and his vision just goes right through us. It cuts right through us. What does Jesus really see today when he looks at you? What does God see when he looks at you? Don't be found naked and ashamed. Jesus says, I'm coming as a thief. He's coming to take what belongs to him. See, a thief comes to take what doesn't belong to him. But Jesus says, I come as a thief, meaning I'm coming in the middle of the night. I'm coming when you're not going to expect it. When you're not going to expect it, I'm coming. Praise God for the Christian. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And they gathered together to the place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. Armageddon. Or Megiddo. Verse 17. Oh, back up. Verse 16. If you go look today, pictures of that valley today, Megiddo, up there in the Holy Land. Incredible. You know, military strategists even say that this is a perfect venue for a war. I've even heard military strategists say that. They look at it, and it's a perfect venue to fight. Go figure. Verse 17. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air. Not on the earth, but in the air. 
And a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. The last time that was said, Jesus was on the cross. And he said, It is done. It is finished. He brought salvation. Amen? Amen. And now God's saying it again, a loud voice from the temple. It is done. It is finished. What are you saying? He goes, wrath, judgment, done. Look, it is done. Verse 18. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings. Let me stop right there. When Jesus died on the cross, look it up, Matthew. He died on the cross. said, it is finished. And he gave up his spirit. Why could Jesus give up his spirit? Because he's God. Can you give up your spirit? Just like this. Said, okay, I'm going to die now. And die. St your heart just stops. Jesus did that because he's God. He knew when to give up his spirit. And the Bible says that when Jesus died, instantly there was a great earthquake in Jerusalem. Lightning and thunder, all that stuff. Again, it happens here, verse 18. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and the great hail from heaven fell upon men. Each hailstone about the weight of a talent, that's a hundred pounds. 100 pound rocks. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell, since that plague was exceedingly great. Judgment falls. You know, people get excited when little hell stones this big fall down. You know that? Oh my goodness! The news shows up and look at these cars. They got pelted by these rocks of hell. I'm talking about 100 pound rocks falling in throughout the whole world. God means business. You know, look, God is not mad with the sinner today. The door to salvation is open. God loves the world. And it's up to you, the body of Christ, to go out, to go out and be the salt and light of the earth. It's up to you. It's up to you to go out and to reach those people that God loves and bring them into the safety of the Lord. Christian, that's your duty. That's what you are called to do, Christian. Too many Christians are caught up in the drama of, of society and the culture. They just they get up, they go to work, they come home, and there's nothing wrong. You got to go to work, you got to pay bills. But life as a Christian is so much more than that, than just working and working. If, you, is that, if that's all you do is work and come home, work and come home, you're a slave to the system. You are. You can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. It's going to get worse, but that's why Christ has given you his very best so that we can prioritize and strategize and we cannot, we, we won't be lazy and we won't be tired and we won't be selfish, but we'll go out and we'll do the work of God because there are people dying every single day. And if this doesn't bring an urgency to your heart, then you need a heart check. Because this is the most important thing on the heart of the Lord. That people would know the gospel. The Bible says, beautiful are the feet of those who bring the gospel. We can't just come to church for ourselves anymore. We come to church because we are getting strengthened in here, in this place, to go out and to win souls. That is your ministry field. You, you, every one of you. You online. That is your ministry, Christian, to go out and present Jesus Christ to them. When is the last time you've led someone to the cross of Jesus? When? If not ever, why? Now is the time. Now is the time. Because the bowls of God's wrath are falling very soon. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? Amen. Give God glory. Receive that word in Jesus' name.
Amen. Now, church, Grace Christian Center, I want you to understand something here. We are doing something biblical here, guys. What do you mean by that? It's, it's biblical for a church to branch out, to give birth to another congregation. God never said, you only do this if you're a big church. He, he said, he said, just do it, right? Am I right? So some people have been asking me, well, Pastor Michael, well, what is really going on? Well, what are you trying to do? Are you leaving Alvin? You know, no, we're not leaving Alvin. Grace Christian Center is just opening up its umbrella more, expanding it out so that others can hear this message so that others can, can come into the kingdom of God to save souls, the, the, the sow seed in a, another harvest field, to allow other people to come into this building and start serving in ministry as well. You know, eventually, we will move to Houston. A property has come up to me. You see, the heart of, since 2013, God has laid it firmly on my heart to go to downtown Houston. And I've been talking to a couple of pastors that have pretty much given me that understanding that wow because there is no spirit filled congregation in downtown you know what I mean by that is I see how Houston is a spiritual stronghold for the nation it truly is and I see what's coming to Houston not sexual robots and all that you got to see deeper What's coming to Houston? Houston is about ready to explode in growth, even more so. Houston is the number one place for sex trafficking, slave trading. Houston is one of the number one drug hub centers in, in the United States. Houston. And the epicenter of all this is in downtown. I'm telling you. Since 2013, God has said, I want to raise up a church in this place. And it's just, it's, it's like, it, it's so... You know, I could actually, there's a place to rent in downtown right now for $7,000 a month. I've written to the CEO, but he's not willing to uh, budge. But for $7,000 a month, we could have a 6,000 square foot auditorium in the heart of downtown. I think that is still an amazing deal, being in the heart of downtown. That is an amazing deal. And having this place 24 seven, not just on Sundays or Wednesdays, but the finances are not there. And so, how do we do it? Well, if we can't get into downtown, I mean, if somebody had that to pay that, somebody, you know, I'm not limiting God on anything. Somebody could say, well, you know, Pastor, I'll, I'll pay that, that for six months. I'll pay $7,000 for six months. See how it goes. I'm not limiting God on anything. But you know, a place did come up for downtown. I mean, near downtown, it's Greenway Plaza at the Edwards Theater right around the corner from Lakewood Church. We went there yesterday, and it's an immaculate place. It's not cheap either, but our Father owns all the gold and silver. And so it's an opportunity to, to reach to another congregation to eventually move to downtown, just a stone's throw away. And at the same time, we don't miss here either. We just won't be here Sunday mornings momentarily. Eventually, another associate pastor will be here on Sunday mornings to conduct Sunday morning services here as well. As well as what we do during the week here, I'll be here too, as well as our school. We're just branching out. We have to, guys. And this is a sacrifice to me because I love seeing my mother in church on Sunday and by going to Houston I won't see her anymore on Sundays and I you know I'm a mama's boy 
They'll tell you that. My wife will tell you that. And my mom understands, Michael, you need to do what you need to do. She told me that. And that hurts for me because I want to see my mother at church on Sundays. She understands. I understand it. This is what God is telling us to do. I'll have all time to spend with her in heaven. But this is just a short time frame we have. Rabbi Ron told me, you know, somebody asked, well, are we going to raise money to, uh, to uh, get funds to do this? And Rabbi Ron, I told them, and he said, you don't need to do that. Rabbi Ron has raised up congregations all over the United States. And he said, the money is right here. He says, the people have it. We don't need to look at money the way we look at money. We need to look at the money the way God looks at money. That money that we give to, to go and allow us to give us funds to go out and reach the loss, it equals in the souls. Think about it, because see, think about it. Who got saved here in this church? Somebody gave money to this ministry to keep the lights on, to do what we needed to do, and guess what? You heard the gospel. You online, you heard the gospel because somebody else gave so that you could hear the gospel and get saved. And now it's time to pass that on. Don't look at it as money. It's called being a financer for the kingdom of God. And guys, I cannot go and do my part if I'm not sent by my church. I'm so ready to do this. I'm so ready to do this. I have no fear because I know what God has told me to do. But I cannot go if I'm not sent. What do I mean? Yeah, you're sent by God, but I have to have your support financially and also in ministry-wise. And so the Lord is saying to dig deep, to dig deep and sow with a cheerful heart. It's not about money, but it's about seeing souls getting saved. You know how they used to do this back in the day? In Acts chapter 4, they would sell houses, they would sell pieces of land, and they would bring all the money to the apostles' feet. Why has that changed today? That's why the church can't meet any needs of people hardly today because they, they, they spend it the wrong way, they're doing it the wrong way. But back then, they did it, and the church exploded. It wasn't about the money. It was about having the resources to reach out to the people. And the church grew under pers Roman persecution. And so I'm ready, but I just need someone to give me the funds to go. Where we're going to have a multi-site church, and it's going to happen. When? I have no idea. It's up to Grace Christian Center. God is a gentleman. God will never force anything on anybody. But the door is open and God is saying, go, go, go. Sow seed, do it. You can't do what I can do and I can't do what some of you can do. You know what I'm saying? We all play a part in this together. And so I, I, I need your support. We need to do this together because... There in that theater yesterday as I went to visit, I saw so many families going to that movie theater. And, and, and it's so many cultures, so many different people there. I'm ready. You know, I feel like, you know, I know that there's more people we can reach here in Alvin and we'll continue to have a pastor here in Alvin. And I will come and speak here in Alvin. This is my home. Bless you. This is my home. But we need to understand that we're just right down the road and we need to be about the work of the Father. Jesus went all around. He didn't just stay in Jerusalem. He went around. He, he reached the cities. He walked so many miles everywhere, walked all over the land. Guys, what we're doing is biblical. And I cry in this sanctuary all the time. Lord, send me. I'll go. I'll go, Lord. I'll go. I'll go. Send me, Lord. You know, people think, oh, your church has money. I don't have no money. I never have had money. Because I never did this for money. I used to make good money, and I left that to do this. And now I am the richest man in the world. I am. Because I know my treasures in heaven are stored up. 
and its souls. It's a blessing to be involved with God to lead people to Christ. And I, and I, I'm gonna, I need to do that till the day I die. And I want you to understand what passion that is and what joy that brings to God's heart and to your heart when you lead people to Christ all the time. I know Miss Louise has told me how she would talk to people at Walmart about the Lord and she just light up. I see her face just lighting up because she realizes that she is so important in God's eyes. And it's a reminder to her. And it's a reminder to you and I and that's why we're still alive. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, body, and soul. And yes, that does mean your wallet too. That does. And when we get to heaven, you will see exactly what I was talking about. I promise you on the authority of the word of God, it is not about money. It's about souls. It's about souls. So Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters right here. Lord, equip them, Lord. Lord, strengthen their faith in you. Strengthen their faith in you, Lord. Lord, may they not look to the left or to the right, but Lord Jesus, may they look to you. Lord Jesus, may they call upon you and dig deep and sow, so bountifully, so bountifully into the harvest field today. Not tomorrow, for tomorrow may not come. Today, Lord, let not the sun go down if we haven't sown. Lord, we believe in your work. We believe in the gospel. We believe, Jesus, that you can change the hearts and reach the people. We believe, Jesus, that you want to use us to be your hands and your feet. And we surrender all to you, Lord. Everything we have does not belong to us. It belongs to you. And Lord, let it reflect that in the way we give. Help us, Lord, so that other families who are in darkness could come to the light of Jesus. Lord, that you would send us, Lord, to be a shockwave in that area, to, to stir the waters, to awaken other churches to walk genuinely with you. Not saying, Lord, that we have it all together, but Lord, it's got to start somewhere. And that we would bring encouragement to other ministries. And Lord, that we would bring an understanding of discernment of what's of you and what's not of you. Help us, Lord. Send us out. Send us out, Lord. Here we are, Lord. Send us out. We need your help, Lord. You provide the finances. And we need you, Lord. You know what we need, Lord. Lord, we're not afraid of the devil. For, Lord, you go before us. And you're behind us. You're all around us, Lord. And so we go out in the armor of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And, Lord, we will proclaim the glory of Christ. And we will take back what belongs to Christ. Father, all for your glory. Lord, heal my brothers and sisters in this sanctuary. Strengthen their walk with you. Lord, heal them, their bones, their joint, their marrow, their DNA, their blood. Lord, their spirit, their mind. Touch them, Lord. Touch them, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. And we praise you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Church, they're waiting for us. What I mean by that is, I've already explained to you the spiritual side. They're waiting. Their family's there. But I want to explain to you, they're waiting for us. What I mean by that is the business part of this, the theater. They, 
money talks. That's they money's there, they'll let us in. And it's got to start some that's just a stepping stone to build a congregation to eventually go to the downtown and to really to really do some great things there. I'm not saying there's no great mission ministries in Houston. That's not what I'm saying. But the Lord is going to do great things. You know, for a very long time, guys, we used to have some incredible altar calls in this ministry. The Holy Spirit moved mildly. The Lord stopped that for several reasons because he really wanted to get us focused on him. But I truly believe that when we go out, you're going to start seeing great moves of the Holy Spirit. You're going to start seeing that. I believe you're going to start seeing signs, miracles, and wonders. We believe. We believe. We believe. But we're going to see the Holy Spirit manifest in a whole other way. And it's going to be all for His glory. Guys, thank you. Thank you for coming out this morning. Pastor Eric will be teaching tonight at 5 p.m. in the back. Come for that. We're going to have, we have some food back there. We could eat right now. And guys, if you have any questions about what's going on with this transition, please, please, I look at you all as members of this church. You have a right to know. Ask me anything, and I will tell you. Ask me anything, and I will tell you. In just a minute, we're going to say something about Miss Yoko. Don't, remind, don't let me forget. Miss Yoko, okay? But, but please, if you have any questions about anything, ask me. Miss Yoko's like, what? <laughs> come here, Miss Yoko. Come here, Miss Yoko, please. Anna, can you come here, please? Yes, come up here. Come here. Please, please. Now, we're going to pray over Miss Yoko. Are you leaving for two weeks? Yeah, two Sundays, I guess. Yeah, when are you leaving? Um, this coming Friday. Okay, mm -hmm. so come on up here. Come right here. Get in the light so they can see on the screen. Yeah, come on over here. We're going to pray for Miss Yoko, and Lazar's out of town right now, but he's going to be going too, right? Yeah. She's going to go home to Japan for two weeks, visit her family. And so um, is there anything specific you would want us to pray for? We can we can show some, uh, you know, God. Show in God. Japan. Show yes, God in show Japan. God. Yes. Okay, Amen, Amen. Does a lot of your family know the Lord or no? No. No, no. they don't. Okay. Well, we're gonna you hear her so, to show God in Japan. Amen, Amen. 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 So, Father, we pray for Miss Yoko and Brother Lazar, Lord, as they prepare to go Friday to Japan for two weeks to visit her family, and Lord, we pray over them both, Lord that they would have a time also of relaxation and peace and strengthening in you, Lord. And Lord, not only that, but she would, they would show God to the people there in Japan. I know, Lord, Japan is so, so impressed upon Yoko's heart. She meets another Japanese church after this church. She goes and meets with the Japanese church every Sunday as well. And Lord, I know that this is so important. Japan is so important on her heart, the Japanese people. It's, it's her people, Lord. And so, Lord, we pray, Father, that you would fill her with the Holy Spirit, her and Brother Lazar, that you would give them words to speak. You would give them wisdom. Give them the gifts of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, may the fruit manifest, Lord. And Lord, that they would lead people to Jesus. Lord, Lord, that they would speak the gospel. And just in every regular conversation. And that, Lord, that they would see you through their talk and through their actions. Help them, Lord. Protect them in their safe travel and mercies, going up there and coming back home safe. Because we love them, Lord, and we want them here with us. Yes. <laughs> but we know they got to go and visit Japan. And so, Lord, bring them back safely. And, Lord, again, may they be refreshed, re-energized in the Spirit. And, Lord... Thank you. Meet their every needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will miss you, Miss Yoko. Yes. But, but we'll look so forward much. to you coming back. We just wanted to pray for her. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And so, guys, uh, that's that. And uh, we will be here later on this evening at 5 o'clock. Uh, anyone brought tithes and offerings, again, or want to sow seed into this? Look, let me just tell you, we're needing, I don't know, between six dollars to $8,000 We've raised roughly now about maybe 16, 1700. We have a long way to go. But I do know this, last year when we needed to raise $5,000, we raised it in less than two days. $5,000 in less than two days we did. And I know that that's no different now. Guys, you can never outgive God. I'm telling you guys, 
I'm, I'm determined. I've never been more determined in my life than to do, than to do this job assignment and to go out and, and to, to, to seek souls for that. And at the same time, we're not going to neglect Alvin. We're, we're, we're going to raise up another associate pastor to stay here on Sunday mornings with other ministry members here. And, you know, and it's all going to be under Grace Christian Center. And, of course, this is my home. I'll be here, too. You know, I'll be speaking maybe Sunday night for sure. Sometime during the week, I'll be here, too. So I'm not leaving Alvin, guys, but I'm spreading myself around. Amen. I can do that. I got the energy to do that right now. I don't know, maybe in 15, 20 years, I don't know, but I have it now. But guys, I need your support. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.